All right, friends, Rosie and Daddy here. We're gonna make a shepherd's pie. It's a perfect low carb comfort food dish because I'm replacing mashed potatoes with whipped cauliflower. We're putting tons of vegetables with ground lamb. It happens in one pan. It's delightful. Rose is gonna work on the vegetables for the pie. I'm gonna work on the cauliflower for the topping. Ah! Ooh, this is some really tasty comfort food as we head into the fall. I like the uh, uniformity of your slices, Rosie. Low, big, low, big. Here's some celery too. Thank you, Dad, but don't ruin my favorite <laughs> I won't. Lots of chopping. <laughs> While I boil the cauliflower, I want to boil a few cloves of garlic too for the mash. Oh, oh my gosh. You've already made a huge mess? Yeah. Dios mio. Give her some credit, right? She makes a mess and cleans too. Pot of water boiling here. I'm gonna carefully put my veg in there along with a little bit of salt. In my opinion, the key to good cauliflower mash is not over boiling. The cauliflower, it gets waterlogged. Seven to eight minutes should do the trick. I'm just about finished cutting my vegetables, but I believe the cauliflower is done. Take a fork and if it mashes like that, there's still a bit of give there, they're done. Before we blend that, come back here. We got the Flav City. Enameled cast iron pan preheating. I'll drizzle in some extra virgin olive oil. And then the green peppers, onions, celery, and carrots. A pinch of salt and a few cracks of pepper. Eventually I'll cook the lamb in there. I'll top it with the creamy mash and chuck it in the oven. Important to do this while it's warm. Transfer the cauliflower to the blender, AKA the Thermomix here. It's gonna make a big sound. Because I have so much topping, I'm gonna put about half a stick of butter into the blender. Season it with a good pinch of salt. I need that cheese, chef. Okay, let's go to Rose's kitchen. Okay, any cheese you want. This is the Kerrygold Dubliner from Costco. You can use Mott's. Mommy specifically asked for a very yummy dinner tonight, so. Where's mom right now? Uh, upstairs resting. Oh, resting. That must be nice. I was resting all last week. I had laryngitis, couldn't even talk. Put all the cheese in there. <laughs> Come back to the kitchen. Come on. Come, we gotta blend it up. Wow, look at that. Let's check it for seasoning. Yeah, with the butter, it's super good. But maybe it needs a little bit more cheese. I was gonna say more salt, actually. It's like baby food. Adult baby food, Rose Hunter. Put a little more salt in there. <laughs> Look at that, friends. Oh, man. Rose is gonna check on mommy and daddy's gonna check for seasoning again. That's proper. Wow. All right, mash is done. Veggies are cooking down. I'm gonna shake in a little bit of ground thyme and then mix in the meat. Now I have ground lamb. If you wanna do it with ground beef or ground turkey, that's fine. Ground beef, the recipe goes to a cottage pie, but with ground lamb, it stays into a shepherd's pot. I'm gonna add all that beef to the pan, season it with salt and pepper. And one of my favorite tools in the kitchen, the meat masher here, and just break it up. This is the perfect pan to do this recipe. And this is my Flav City Enamel 12 and a half inch cast iron pan. It's part of my non-toxic cookware set. We're still doing the sale for 10% off. So if you want to go to flavcitycookware.com and check it out, you can get this thing for under $70. It's a great cast iron. You can see the lamb is about halfway cooked through. Now's the time to add two flavor bombs. Bomb number one, tomato paste. I'll add about two and a half teaspoons here and tamari soy sauce here. I'll shake in about a tablespoon and a half. You could put water if you want, but bone broth has that nice collagen and gelatin in there. It's gonna make it nice and ragu-like. I'll splash in about a quarter cup to start and give it a good mix. Heave, ho, oh, this is done. Look at that. You can see it cooked down. It's like a nice ragu. I want to flatten this. We'll take our cauliflower mash, pour that all over the top. Leilani pointed out that by using that 
tomato paste and tamari. It's my version of doing Worcestershire sauce because there's not a clean Bobby approved one on the market, but you still get that nice umami by using those two ingredients there. And we'll spoon the mash all the way to the edges. This is serious comfort food, my friends. Guido comfort food. I'm gonna transfer this to the oven for about 15 minutes. And then for the last five minutes, we'll broil it till it gets nice and bubbly on top. Oh, we got spitting mad shepherd's pie, my friends. Brother's been on for the last five minutes. I put the sheet tray to catch the drip. This is done, but this has to rest for 30 to 40 minutes. Otherwise you'll burn your face off. I'm gonna work out in the meantime and I'll see you then. This is crazy. I went to work out. This has been sitting out for over an hour and it's still nice and warm. Rosie's loosening the pie from the edges. And we're gonna dig in here. Post-workout shepherd's pie. Okay. Did that one's for me. Yes, ma'am. Whoa. Good. A big piece for myself. You wanna let it cool down so it doesn't fall apart when you lift it up like that. Mmm. Righteous? Nummy. Wow. If a four-year-old says nummy, you know it's good shepherd's pie. Mmm. That is nummy. You know what I'm really tasting? My mock Worcestershire sauce. It has so much sabor. Mmm. How good is that whipped cauliflower on top? High five. Okay, I'm gonna put the recipe down below. It's on flavecity.com. Make it, you're gonna love it. Cheerio, bye. Bye and make it. <laughs> bye and make it. <laughs>